So about a month and a half ago, Thomas Salander, a quite well-known 3D printing YouTuber, published a video on a very easy to build DIY motorized slider. I was absolutely fascinated by this video because I tried once before to build a motorized slider. I didn't have any experience back then and I built a way too heavy model which didn't work at all so I gave up the project and when I saw the video from Thomas I immediately started printing with his files that he very nicely provided to use and all the instructions. Now, while I started printing the files on the same die, of course I didn't have all the hardware on hand, so I had to wait for the electronics to arrive from China first, because before I could finish up the project. Now, printing the parts is pretty straightforward. I just used the files that he provided and had to use some support material, which was quite a pain in the ass to remove because it covered everything and you couldn't really get at it, but the way that these parts need to work, they just are in a way that you have to use support material. Ideally you would use dissolvable support material, but I only have a single extruder, so that isn't an option for me. I didn't bother to print the battery holder or the electronics part because I wasn't planning on using batteries just some AC power because I'm only gonna use the slider in the studio and the electronics part just was way too thick for my taste and I thought I'd design my own when I had my electronics working. And then a couple of weeks later when the bearings and the electronics arrived from China I started assembling them. This was quite straightforward, just the bearings with some screws into the 3D printed parts. I was able to use uh, some normal screws and make them hot a bit, so to screw them in easier. And that worked very well. Thanks very much for, to Banggood for providing these electronics. And they are all linked down in the description and if you want to build something like this, you can check out those links. And also use the coupon code to get some percentages of the Arduino things. Now I assembled all the electronics like I saw in Thomas's video and this description and then I went to the computer and uploaded his file. But as it is with many kind of DIY projects, they don't work in the first try. Like they don't basically ever. And I couldn't get my screen to work. Now I tried a bunch of different libraries as uh, this is the main issue with th this screen. The screen looks the same as on many different places in, in, on the internet but they are slightly different, use slightly different controller and so the libraries don't all work with this one. But I just wasn't really able to get it to work and didn't want to spend any more time on it, so I thought of another solution. Now, I still had the Gerbil shield from my first CNC experiments left over with quite a few Polulu drivers. And this gave me the idea that just for testing purposes, I could just use the Gerbil shield and driver and use Universal G Code Center to tell the slider how to move. And because I already knew how to use Gerbil, everything worked like pretty much right away and I had the slider tethered to my computer and it worked. This gave me quite a bit more confidence in this entire project as I finally saw the slider moving, was able to put the camera on there and see wow it actually works and looks kinda decent. So I was looking for a solution where I didn't have to have my computer tethered to it. And then I found my old Raspberry Pi in a drawer. I connected up the Arduino to the Raspberry Pi, loaded Universal G Code Center on the Raspberry Pi, and then used a cheap wireless adapter to connect the Raspberry Pi to my wireless network. And then I'm using my MacBook with an SSH client to connect to the Raspberry Pi remotely. 
That way I can control the Raspberry Pi from this computer without any wires connected to it. To power the Raspberry Pi I just used the USB power bank. You wouldn't have to use such a big one. This one is probably gonna last for days and end but I don't really care because that's just the one I have. Now this setup still is quite janky and it looks prototypey and it is still a prototype. Ideally you would use in this scenario a smaller Arduino like an Arduino Nano with the Pi Zero, the new one which also has a wireless on board already and then you could condense this big packet in a really small package which would make it a bit nicer. But the functionality is already here and to experiment this is great. So why won't we dive into it a bit more detailed. So on my computer here I see Universal G Code Sender. I have my motor for the slider hooked up to the Y axis so if I press these buttons here the motor should move. But of course this isn't really smooth movement so I'll use the G code to control the slider. Now G code is very simple. It's basically just you tell what to do, that's a G command and then you tell which axis how far. Here it is just G0 and then I can type in the axis so it's Y and I want to move by 10 centimeters. And as you were able to see the machine moved by 10 centimeters. And I can do the same by maybe minus, let's say 30 centimeters, and I should use the minus sign here. And you see that works as well. Now you should be able to use F and then the speed, but it didn't really work for me. But one workaround there is. I can just set the default speed for a machine. So I typed $5 equals, that's just for the speed, and then I can type in how fast. Now I'm running at 200, let's just bump it down for example to 50. Also press enter, and if we then take the same, like this, plus 10 again. camera has to move to make the desired length in the time you want. This is also scalable down to the time-lapse level, where you could do a time-lapse with this, where the motor is just moving very very slowly. Also using Universal G-Code Center isn't the optimal way. Now I don't have that much coding experience, but I think it should be quite easy to write a small custom program you can maybe even use on your phone to control the slider. I could also, instead of using Gurable, which is really not designed for this, I could write some custom things on the Arduino, maybe use the board from Intel, which has Bluetooth integrated, and then I could use it, then I could build it, connect it to my smartphone, and use an app to control the slider. So, you see, there are many, many different possibilities that you could try to build a slider like this. And the base structure is pretty simple. I just used from Redrick the slider I already had, added the motor, some 3D printed parts and we're good to go. And that's really inexpensive as well. Like this entire slider cost me under 100 bucks including the Raspberry Pi and Arduino and everything. That's really amazing. So while this video isn't a guide or even a finished thing that I made, I want to encourage you to build something like this as well. I'm gonna have all the things from Thomas Salander linked down in the description, also have links to all the electronics I used, and let me know on Twitter if you built something. 
like this or maybe even use some ideas that I mentioned in this video. The link to my Twitter is down below, also with my Instagram and website link where you can check out some other behind the scenes stuff. If you like this video please leave a like down below as well and also consider to subscribe. I see that many of you watch my videos but aren't actually subscribed so why don't you hit that button, it doesn't cost you anything. Thanks for watching and until next time.